From major irregularities in KYC processes to submission of false compliance reports and a lack of transparency, there's been a series of regulatory lapses by Paytm Payment Bank over the course of the last five years, which resulted in the stringent action taken by the RBI against the bank. Now, one of the biggest concerns that RBI had centers around the Know Your Customer or KYC violation by the bank. And that means that the bank did not ensure proper verification procedures were in place when opening accounts, leading to potential misuse by miscreants. Now, here's what happened as a result, and this is what we picked up from sources. RBI found complete absence of KYC for lacks of customers. There were PAN validation failures in several lakh accounts. There were instances of a single PAN card being linked to more than 1,000 customers. In some cases, the total value of transactions ran into crores of rupees, which is far beyond the regulatory limit, which is allowed for minimum KYC accounts. Now, we also understand that there was an unusually high number of dormant accounts, which were prone to being used as mule accounts as well. In fact, our sources indicate that out of about 35 crore wallets that Paytm Payment Bank maintained, 31 crores were found to be inoperative. There were also concerns relating to money laundering arising from deficiencies in the KYC processes and a lack of transaction monitoring by the bank. Many of these accounts in question were also frozen by law enforcement agencies for committing digital frauds. But to be clear, Paytm's customer accounts are under scrutiny because of weak regulatory compliance, leaving them prone to misuse. But there are no allegations or regulatory concerns relating to the company itself or its founder having indulged in any sort of money laundering. The other big concern was the fact that Paytm Payment Bank did not maintain an arm's length distance in dealing with other group companies. So the group's financial and non-financial businesses were often commingled in violation of RBI's licensing conditions. There was also no operational segregation whatsoever between the IT infrastructure of the bank and the promoter entity, leading to data privacy concerns. On several occasions, we understand, RBI as well as external auditors found that the compliance reports submitted by Paytm Payment Bank were false. The bank also failed to disclose substantial payables to the parent entity, that is 197, and often revised agreements to benefit other group companies, which was detrimental to the bank and its clients. So it was a culmination of all of these factors, which eventually led to the RBI placing Paytm Payment Bank under severe restrictions, and the way out of here is going to be tough. So what happens next? First, it shutters down for Paytm's banking ambitions because it's highly unlikely that RBI will let them undertake any banking activity as of now. Secondly, as a payments bank, while Paytm cannot lend directly to customers, it does tie up with other NBFC's financial entities, which are allowed to lend to originate loans and earns a commission on those. Now, such banking relationships, which are often based on trust, may face a hit because lenders may choose to be more careful in engaging with a player that is in regulatory crosshairs. Third, while the bank could be under severe restrictions, there are also other challenges for Paytm to deal with on the side. You see, Paytm has about four crore registered merchants on its platform who have QR codes, sound box devices with QR codes to accept payments. Now, wherever this QR code is linked to a Paytm payment bank account at the back end, Paytm is going to have to replace the QR code with a new one, and this may prove to be a logistical challenge. Paytm will also have to ask all of these merchants to move their beneficiary account to another bank, which will also be a bit of a hassle for shopkeepers, Kirana store owners, etc. And who's to say that some of them will not migrate to a rival like a phone pay or Bharat pay, for instance? Fourth, Paytm also cannot really onboard any new merchants now because RBI has not granted it the required payment aggregator license to do so. And with all that's ongoing, it seems unlikely that RBI will grant them this license in a hurry. So this presents a dual challenge. Not only do they have to fight to retain the existing merchant base, they're also not going to be allowed to onboard any new ones. For customers like you and me, of course, we can continue to use the Paytm app to scan and make UPI payments like we do on any other app like GPay or PhonePay, but the Paytm wallets will have to go. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV 18 on all of our digital platforms.